Hey guys, I'm Brandon Stevens, and welcome to the Maddox Woodworks Workshop. In today's video, we're going to cover the installation of the drawers and shelving on the workbench. So let's get to it. I began this project by first breaking down the plywood for the drawer casings. I then assembled them using wood glue and pocket holes. I decided to go with one shallow drawer and one deep drawer for each case. This way, I can store screws and other hardware in the shallow drawers and all of my handheld power tools in the deep drawers. I'll show that here in just a minute. came time to install the casings, I found that I cut everything exact in the measurements and didn't leave much wiggle room. This turned out looking great in the end, but it just took a few love taps to get it in place. Then I just used some two inch screws and secured them to the workbench. With the casings now installed, I moved on to cutting the material for the drawers, and as you can see, this gave me a lot of time at the table saw. Now that all the drawer pieces were cut, I moved over to my pocket hole jig. With this being shop drawers, pocket holes will hold just fine. And with that, I was off to the races. After what seemed like a thousand pocket holes, I moved over to assembly. I used these clamp it assembly squares from Rockler to establish the first two sides. Then I just squared up the sides with the back and the first drawer frame was done. This isn't a sponsored video, but these assembly squares from Rockler can really be a game changer in any assembly process. But anyway, now that the drawer frame was complete, I attached the base using wood glue and countersunk screws. I then repeated the process on the remaining drawers. Here you can see when my little neighbor buddy decided he wanted to come over and help with some of the assembly on the drawers.
All right, so I'm getting ready to install these drawers. I went ahead and cut me some spacers that I'll use to keep the drawer raised up to the correct height. And then I've got another spacer that I've also cut that'll run the length of the drawer cabinet and that will help me space my drawer slides. Next level. Here you can see I, I initially installed the drawer slides a half inch back into the case, but later I changed my mind and moved them up to being flush off camera. This way, my drawer facings will cover up the casing in the front when the drawers are closed. To install the slides on the drawer, first you attach the front screw and work your way back. This will allow the drawer to stay properly aligned as the drawer slide is being installed. I repeated the process on the remaining drawers and they operated flawlessly. Next was to cut the drawer faces. I broke the plywood sheet down into rough dimensions by using my circular saw off camera. I then trimmed them the length from the table saw. To get the drawer faces aligned, I used some scrap 2x material and some note cards. Once the face was where I wanted it, I used hot glue to get the initial hold. After the hot glue had dried, I was then able to open the drawer and begin securing the face to the drawer. I did this by pre-drilling and using the screws. For the drawer pulls, I used some Mississippi cutouts that we had already made, attached a strip of plywood, and they were perfect for this application. To get the spacing for the top drawer, I just used a couple note cards and everything lined up great. With everything installed, I chose to finish the faces with the same Danish oil that I had used for the top of the workbench. some storage solutions already going on some of the battery power tools from rigid on my fasteners and screws got the sure bonder glue gun Sharpening stones, T-Track hardware, everything's nice and organized. And this is all the corded power tools. And these drawers do a nice job of keeping everything organized and in one place. To finish off this part of the build, I installed some half-inch plywood as a shelf and a backer for the drawers. They were once again fastened with countersunk screws. I routed the dust collection hose for the downdraft portion of the workbench, and phase two was complete. This shelf is going to hold my small air compressor, hose reel, and I may end up building a shelf for hardwood cutoffs down the road. If you have any suggestions for this space, leave them in the comments. Alright, well that does it for this one. As you can see, there can be many modifications made to this workbench, and I'm sure I'll be doing several more things down the road. Next week's video will cover the installation and construction of the leg vise, and then we'll be working on other shop projects such as my miter saw station and storage solutions throughout the shop. Until then, keep it safe in the shop and happy woodworking. Hey guys, I want to thank y'all for taking this time and watching this video. If you like what you've seen and you'd like to support what we do here at Maddox Woodworks, we have a link to our Patreon account down in the description. 
If you haven't already, like our video, subscribe to our channel, and click that bell notification. That will let you know every time we upload a new video. See ya!